Thank you for coming back. In Form 4, you studied work, energy and efficiency before, right? So today, we are going to have a quick revision on this subject. Remember, you need to work hard, but the right way is important. Don't work hard the wrong way, all right? Now, to work hard the right way is what you do in output revision. To do well in physics, to understand physics, you have to have output revision all the time, meaning that you answer past year questions and you do a revision by writing down answers, answering questions, drawing diagrams, etc. It is not like input revision, which means just reading the books. If you just read books over and over again, it does not help very, very much, okay? Just remember. At the end of today's lesson, you should be able to solve problems involving work, energy, and efficiency. Allow me to give you a very simple question. In this question, you will see that there is an electric motor being used to lift a 10 Newton object through 6 meters, as shown in diagram 1. The total amount of electrical energy used by the motor is 80 joules. Alright? Are you ready? So, let's continue and see how we are going to work this out. What is the question now? Calculate the efficiency of the motor. That's it. Very simple. Alright? 10 newtons being moved up. So, there is work done. Alright? Now, to calculate this, what we have to do is to calculate the efficiency. Alright? So, right now, I'll just write down some of the things that are given in the question. Alright? So, what is the first thing that is given? Write down what is the formula. Alright? Because we want to calculate efficiency. Efficiency of the motor, all right, is given by output power, this you have studied, divided by input power, you multiply this by 100%. So we need this. So far so good? All right. So in order to answer this question, you have to break it down into parts. Alright, that's what I written earlier. Calculate the efficiency of the motor. So write down step by step. Do I have the output power? Do I have the input power? Alright. Now, output power, you take a look at this question. The load 10 newtons is moved up by 6 meters. So, what is the work done? Alright. Write down. Eh? Work done in moving the load up. It is equal to 10 Newton multiplied by 6 meters. Okay. So this will give me 60 Newton meters. And 60 Newton meters is actually equals to 60 joules. Okay. I write down 60 joules. Alright, so that is my work done. Now here I'm going to say something that you need to be very careful about. We have to calculate the power. Power is actually energy work done per unit time. So let's say that in this question, let's say the time taken is 10 seconds. I can choose any value I want. Because the time taken for the input power and the output power is the same. Alright, so I will just say that let the time t be equals to 
10 seconds. It's very easy because for the load to go up, it takes time over the distance. So let's say 10 seconds. So now what is the power? Now this is very important. What is the power output? All right. I write down here, subscript. What is the output power? It is equal to the work done, 60 joules divided by 10 seconds. So I will get here 6 watts. So far so good? Alright, so the first part I have settled. Output power I have done. Now what about the input power? Okay, I draw a line across. Input power, look at the question again. The total amount of electrical energy used by the motor is 80 joules. Huh. It uses up 80 joules. So in other words, the 80 joules is the input energy. Alright. So now, what is the power? I write down subscript input. So what is the input power now? It's 80 joules divided by, what is the time? It's the same time, isn't it? The same time as we use to lift up the load. So it is 10 seconds. So what do I get? 8 joules per second, which is 8 watts. So remember these two answers. We are going to use it further. Alright. So now take a look at the formula. Efficiency equals to output power divided by input power times 100%. I'm going to write this down again. So, efficiency, therefore, efficiency is equal to output power. Here you are. You see, once you have done your background work, the rest becomes easy. 6 watts divided by input power. It is 8 watts multiplied by 100%. Now, before I carry on, a quick reminder to all of you is this. Can the value of efficiency of a system be more than 100%? No. Because according to the principle of conservation of energy, it says that in a system of energy, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So if I put in 6 watts of power, or rather, I take the value. If I put in 8 watts of power, I cannot produce more than 8 watts. If it is 100% efficiency, I will get 8 watts. But I can never get more than 8 watts of output power. You know what I mean? So that is very, very important. In other words, once you keep that in mind, even as you come to this step in your answer, you are thinking all the time. You know that if I make a careless mistake, and if my answer is more than 100%, something is wrong somewhere in my calculation. It must never be more than 100% as far as efficiency is concerned. So, we carry on. 6 divided by 8 times 100%, you will get 75%. Alright, so 75% is the efficiency of the motor. So in this short lesson, you have learned a few things concerning energy, concerning work, concerning the units, efficiency, even principle of conservation of energy. So you have to put all this together and you will do well. So look out for other questions. Sit down and work, work out the answers yourself. Practice, do your rehearsal on the same topics and you will be steady and you will understand it even much better. So I believe that through this simple example, now you are in a better position to solve problems in work, energy and efficiency. And with that, once again, I would like to say thank you very much again for being with me and may God bless you in your life. And here I say bye, see you again. Uncle Pang here. <laughs>